Well, we are live. Praise the Lord. How you doing today? Are you doing good? Hey, I'm Jeremiah Smith, and I'm so excited to be with you today, and I believe God's going to do some wonderful things in your life today. Do you believe that? I believe he wants to do some wonderful things in your life today. You know, some people don't even think about how he's always looking to do some good things in you and how he's looking to do things all across the earth, you know, because he's a good father, and he's looking to do some good things to make your life better every day. Do you believe that? I believe it. Hey, man, you know, a good father wants to do good things, and he he is a, the perfect expression of good. Amen. You know, he's the perfect expression of being good or of good because he is good. He is love and he wants to help you today. Whatever you're dealing with today, maybe you're depressed. Maybe you're down. Maybe you're dealing with some stress today. You know, he's the perfect expression of love and goodness and he wants to help you today. You know, you didn't just happen to tune in by accident. You didn't just happen to just turn this on. No, he is. He wants to be a blessing to you, praise the Lord. And he wants to reach out to you with his mighty hand today, you know, and deliver you right there in the area that you're needing deliverance, praise the Lord. If it's healing or if it's depression or if you're dealing with stress or, you know, even if you're having a need, you know, God can help you with that need, praise the Lord, you know, and nothing's too hard for him. Who, what's too hard for the father? There's nothing too hard for him. And he can help you right there where you're at today. And he wants to do that for you today if you'll let the father help you right there where you're at. You know, some people, they're just, you know, they don't want any help. <laughs> they don't want anybody to help them in their circumstance. They'd rather just suffer, you know, and you don't have to suffer. Let the father come right there where you're at, you know, and he can fix it a whole lot easier and you can fix it. You know, and he can do it with a whole lot less uh, strength and, and a whole lot less, uh, uh, time, you know, God can make it work for you so much quicker if you let him to help you in your circumstance today. Praise the Lord. Do you believe that? Do you believe he can help you in your circumstance? I believe he can do that right there for you and help you make things easier and help you get through some stuff that you're going through right now. Let him do that today. And I, we're going to let him minister through his word today. If you'll stick with me, I believe we're going to take you on a ride. And I believe he's going to help you be encouraged today right there where you're at. You say, well, why would you want to encourage me, Jesus? Jeremiah, why would you want to take the time, you know, to encourage me where I'm at? You know, what does it mean to you for you to encourage me today? Well, you know, I've been like you so many times and God sent people to encourage me. And so I feel debted to the father, you know, to make sure I'm encouraging you right there where you're at. You know, I feel like I owe him that much to encourage someone else. He's helped me so often. He's been so good to me too much, I tell you. And I want to encourage you right there where you're at. You know, you ever feel that way? He's been so good to you. You want to be good to someone else? Have you ever felt that way? And that's the way I feel all the time. He, he's a good, good father, praise the Lord. And, and I want to express that to you. And I want him to minister to you today and be a blessing to your life. Praise the Lord. So, you know, you can catch us live on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Central Time. Sometimes we're, uh, we do post messages if we're not here, you know, and, or if we have a series going like we have going right now, you know, that's why you want to tune to Jeremiah Smith Ministries .com. You know, we post messages if there's some reason. Reason that we're not here, but we try to be here Wednesdays and Sundays for you. And so, excuse me, on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Central Time, and of course on Sundays at 4 uh, p.m. Central Time, you know, and sometimes we're a little late, but we try to be there on time for you to be a blessing to your life and encourage you. You know, we don't have a worship team. We don't have an announcement person. I am the announcement person and I am the worship team. So if I'm a little late, I do apologize about that. But I try to be here for you and be a blessing to you every Wednesday and Sunday. Praise the Lord. And if I feel led, sometimes, like I said, I'll put some messages up. But we want to make sure that you're getting fed, you know, make sure that you're getting fed spiritually and encouraged. And, be, and God wants to do some things in your life. You know, he cares about where you're at today. Don't uh, don't ever misunderstand me. Don't ever feel like it, you know, no one's paying attention to you. God cares about where you're at today and he wants you to grow spiritually and be encouraged today. Praise the Lord. So, you know, the fivefold ministry talk, you know, there, there's all five different uh, the, uh, the fivefold ministry you got prophets and teachers and pastors. But he says that we're here to edify. That means to encourage you. You know, if you got someone that's beating you up and slapping you around, you know, I don't think that they're doing what the Lord has them to do. You know, God wants you to be encouraged. Now, I didn't say they wouldn't tell you about going to hell. And I didn't say that they wouldn't challenge you to have a stronger spiritual walk. 
But you can do that in a way that you're encouraging people, you know. Uh, people are already today, I feel like, so beat down. And you don't have to be beat down. God wants to help you today, you know. You can't do any of this on your own. You can't be a Christian on your own. He says we're laborers together, and he wants to help you on a daily basis to do the things that he wants to fulfill in your life. And you can't do it alone. You need him to help you to do what he's called you to do. Praise the Lord. So you can catch us live at those times. Like I said, if we're not here, then we want to make sure that you're growing spiritually. So we will post some messages, um, but uh, you can get those on Spotify, Google Music, iTunes, Listen Notes, Podbeam, TuneIn Off Alexia, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Deezer, Pandora, Verbal, iVox, Audio Junkie, Podchaser, Player FM, and Samsung uh, is where you can you know, listen to those messages. And of course, you know, if you want, our home is Podbeam. And so we have, oh, something around 400 and uh, getting close, I think, to 500 different podcasts that you can check out there, including Coffee Confessions, to help you to grow spiritually and be encouraged. Praise the Lord. So check those out. And, uh, you know, you, there's always something to feed on here with Jeremiah Smith Ministries. Praise the Lord. And, you know, I'll throw in there, too, my friend uh, Michael Studeman. You might check his out, too, there, uh, Truth with Studi. And uh, you can grow spiritually there, too. He has some great podcasts. So check those out. I believe that they'll be a blessing to you. You can also listen to our YouTube channel, which this video, literally, that I'm talk we're doing right now uh, is being videotaped and recorded. And it'll be going out about 9 o'clock on uh, YouTube. Sometimes it takes a little longer because of how... YouTube, uh, they take a little time sometimes to uh, to get it on there, but we try to put it on there by nine o'clock. It literally goes up and starts going into, and it should be there about nine o'clock for you to watch if you like to watch the videos. And so you can listen to us on uh, Podbeam, listen to us on YouTube, check it out on all those other places. You don't have to download another app. Uh, you can literally get into those messages on there. If you'd like to give, there's no pressure to give. You can go to jeremiasmithministries.podbeam.com and Hit the, there's a tab for pages and it'll bring down the pages and you can go to the giving tab if you'd like, if you'd like to give there. Uh, but uh, there's no, no stress to give here. And uh, you can uh, also, if you'd like to download the messages, just cl click on the message that you want to listen to there and hit the download button. And uh, you can download any of these messages for free. And they're here to be an encouragement to you. Praise the Lord. So our ministry is free and it's here to encourage you and to help you to be a blessing to your life. Praise the Lord. So feel free to do that. Take advantage of that and let it be an encouragement to you. Pass it along to someone else and encourage them and be a blessing to them. Praise the Lord. So that's what we're doing here today. And we're going to get into the word today. Grab your Bible, get your tablet, get your phone. We're going to be doing something a little different today as I feel led by the Holy Spirit. Go on over to Ephesians, the third chapter there. We're going to pray. Let me get a drink here. That's some good stuff right there. <laughs> Let me get another drink. No, I think that did it. I think we're ready. Praise the Lord. So we're, we're going to get into the word and we're going to start in Ephesians, the third chapter today. Let's go ahead and pray. And uh, we're going to lift it up before the father today. Father, we just thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Father, for your mercy. You've been so good to us. We thank you for being our teacher and being our help through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit today. And Father, we lift up people's needs today. If there's someone needing healing or if they're needing uh, something in their life, Father, Lord, we ask that you help that need to be met in Jesus' name. Father, we agree with them. Bible says we agree concerning anything that we shall ask it to be done. And we agree with them that their need is met today. If it's spiritually physically. We ask for it to be met in Jesus' name. However you got to do it, Father, we ask that you meet that need in Jesus' name, Father. And Father, we just lift you up today. We thank you for being so good to us and taking care of our families, taking care of us, Father, seeing the future, knowing how to make sure that we're prepared for everything coming against us, Father Lord. We thank you always have the provision and everything we need. And we thank you for being a good, good father for us, Father, making sure it's prearranged and in our path, whatever we need today. And we thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. And Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit be our teacher, be our help, be our standby, flood us with light, help us to see some things we've never seen before. We ask for your wisdom, your guidance by your Spirit, help no one to leave today, Father, without getting what they need spiritually. And we just thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. And we thank you, Father, for it in advance in Jesus' name. And like I said, before we leave, we always like to minister to you. Thank you for being such a wonderful Father in our lives. Thank you for taking care of us and giving us good health and being faithful to us, Father. And we just thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And I'm going to get one more drink here. We're going to get started. 
All right. We're going to Ephesians, the third chapter. Are you ready today? I said, are you ready today? <laughs> you got somebody in the room, look at them, say, I'm ready. Yeah. You know, are you going to fulfill what God's called you to do? You know, it's good to say that, you know, you should say it every day if you can. You know, if you're having challenges in that area, say, hey, I will fulfill what he's called me to do. You know, that's that's not looking back. That's not getting stressed out. No, that's just speaking it by faith. I'm going to fulfill what he's called me to do. Praise the Lord, you know. And you can say that all the time in faith, you know, speaking it, calling for it. And so God can help you with it. Praise the Lord. He wants to help you. He wants to help you with everything that you're doing today. He wants to be involved, right? He wants to be helping you to make it happen. You know, he sent the Holy Spirit to help you. You know, you're not alone today. You didn't just happen to turn this on by accident. He wants to help you today to have some direction by his Holy Spirit today. Praise the Lord. So let's go to Ephesians, the third chapter, the 14th verse. And uh, we're going to be talking about the, the God who wants to do more than you ask or think. That's what we're going to be talking about today. And he wants to do more than what you ask or think in your life. You know, the only one that limits him to doing that in your life is you. Think about that today. You know, he, he's not going to make it happen in your life. He's not going to force it to happen in your life. The only one that limits him from doing that in your life would be you, you know. That's just like if you needed healing today, you know. The only one that's limiting you from getting that is you. Jesus has already paid for it at the cross. And he said all things are possible to him that believe. It's all been paid for at the cross, but it has to do with us, you know. So if it comes down to, hey, I don't know why this isn't happening. We know whose side it's on, don't we? Right? Automatically, we did some messages on a God side of things and a man side of things. And it comes down to our side of things. We have to do what he's leading us to do, you know. You can't be shocked if something's not happening, you know, because God's going to always do his part. He's faithful to do his part. If someone told you that God doesn't do his part, they're lying. That just comes down to the fact that we have to work on our side. You know, God's faithful. He keeps his word. He never lies. And he'll always do what he said he's going to do. He's, he's just faithful. <laughs> you know why he does that? It's because he wants it to happen in your life more than you do. <laughs> he wants everything to be meant more than you. He don't want you suffering. He doesn't want you hurt. He doesn't want you dealing with pain on a daily basis. No, he wants it to happen in your life more than you do. Think about that today. That's a good father. I'm a father, you know, and I, I don't sit there and want to see my kids suffering and I don't want to see them in pain and I don't want their needs not to be met. My wife was talking recently to my son in Arizona and uh, she was talking about, a, he was talking about a certain need he had coming, you know, and my wife's like, hey, I want to help you, you know, <laughs> you know, and I want to help him in every part of it I can too. But it's because you want your good, if you're good parents and you have a good heart, you want to help your kids. You want to help them to have their needs met, you know, and he doesn't want you to hurt either. He doesn't like you to suffer either. He wants your needs to be met. And that's, that's, that testifies of his goodness. When he's, when he helps you, that testifies of your goodness. Now, if people, if, uh, if your uncle Billy Bob or, or Jimmy Joe is not getting their needs met, you know, that doesn't mean you're not going to get your needs met, you know. God will help you, but you can't base it on their experience. We can't base it on our life experience. We have to base it on God's word, you know. And there's people water down the word because they've had bad experiences, and it comes down to their side. And we have to do our part for God to make good things to happen in our life. If he wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think this year, which has been prophesied this year, you have to be a person that's willing to let him do that in your life. You know, you have to be a person that's willing to take the steps that he's leading you to do. And we have to let the Holy Spirit guide and direct us to do that. Praise the Lord. Now, you may have already been doing some of those things, you know, but I'm talking to some people that he's been dealing with you about doing certain things and you haven't done it. And he's trying to get the best in your life. He's working on you every day. He may get up and talk to you about the same thing every day. It's because he wants his best in your life, you know, but you're the one limiting him from doing that if you don't let him do that in your life. 
You have to be a person willing to let him do that in your life, you know. It all comes from us taking action, you know. And it may have something to do with something totally unrelated. You say, well, why would I do that? That doesn't relate to this issue over here, does it? You don't ever know. If you, if you do one thing, it may apply to the other. And you, it's important to do what he's telling you to do right now so he can get the other to you through that avenue you know you don't have to figure it out and that good to know but he has it all figured out he's a god that fig- he has plans and he has pathways and he knows how to work things out but you have to be willing to do those things that he's leading you to do now it affects the now it affects the future and it has so much to do with the big picture that you don't even realize. It's amazing, praise the Lord. Well, let's go ahead and get here to Ephesians, the third chapter, the 14th verse. It says, for this cause, and we pray this on uh, Coffee Confessions, this third chapter in this prayer here. But it has so much to do with what's going to happen this year. God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think this year. The Ephesians 3.14 says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Oh, I like that. Powerful to think about. <laughs> Amen. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in your inner man. What's that have to do with? Well, with him strengthening your your spirit. You know, the real you is a spirit, isn't it? Right? And the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you and he wants to strengthen you on the inside. These prayers are powerful, powerful prayers. The 17th verse, that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith that ye be rooted and grounded in his love. Oh, I like that. He's writing to establish you in faith and his love. You know, that's why these prayers are so important. He's establishing you in his faith and his love. And then the 18th verse says, may I be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. So much knowledge and the love of Christ. (laughs) Wow. And there is lots of love in the knowledge of Christ. You're going to learn about that today a little bit. Lots of love in the knowledge of Christ. Wow. His actions, what he did here on the earth, what he's doing in heaven. So much wonderful love and so much knowledge in watching in Christ's life, watching the actions that he took. The things that he did here on the earth. You know, he taught us how to walk in the spirit. We got four gospels talking about his life there, four different viewpoints. If if you had four different people at a movie, you know, they, they could all watch the movie. And, we'd, we, and if we talked to him after the movie, we get four different viewpoints. That's why the gospels are so great. You got four different viewpoints of what happened when Jesus was here on the earth. You know, and he and we have interesting viewpoints. You know, Mark kind of gives you kind of an action view. You know, it's like you you see all the action going on. And it's quick. It's if you like to get to the points quick, Mark is the book for you. You know, I mean, man, it's almost like Jesus is his Nikes when he's running around. You know, it's like somebody's getting healed and devils are getting cast out quick and things are happening quick in the book of Mark. You know, Luke is awesome because Luke gives he's a physician. He gives you lots of details. You know. If you like details, like my wife, this is the book for you. The book of Luke is, gives you the details, you know. And then, of course, you know, we got John, you know. And, and oh, man, the loving John, you know, gives you a whole book of just a loving look of Jesus. Powerful to look at, you know. And then, of course, we got uh, Matthew, you know. And we got a lot of the customs and things, you know, that with the Matthew, you know. They're all different viewpoints. You get different sides of what really happened with Jesus, but so much wonderful uh, information and so much leading by the Holy Spirit. And he shows us how to walk in the anointing in four different ways, you know. And he shows you how to do that with your life, you know. And that is why the Gospels are so important, because we're seeing four different ways that we can be led by the Holy Spirit. Jesus did it perfectly, you know. How to be led by the Spirit. He just did it perfectly in every way. And he wants to do that in your life. He wants you to walk in the spirit. He gave us an example and he wants you to be able to walk in the spirit like he did. 
and those four different gospels, we can see that, praise the Lord. And, and he wants you to be led by the Spirit on a daily basis, you know, listening to the Holy Spirit, listening to that still small voice inside of you so he can lead you and guide you, you know. And it's so important today because we have a battle for your mind like crazy today. That little phone that you hold in your pocket there, you know, it's battling for your mind. It wants you to have your attention on it all the time. That TV in your house, it's wanting your attention all the time. People around you wanting your attention all the time. But you, you've got to learn to listen to the Holy Spirit. You've got to be a person that is willing to stop and listen to the Holy Spirit. Because those directions are way more important than all the directions around you. If you can't get those directions, you're not going to go the right way. You're going to go off in a way you don't want to go. You're going to go into a direction that you don't want to be going in. And you have to calm yourself and listen to the Holy Spirit. And you say, well, Jeremiah, well, that's, that's, that's easy for you to say. Yeah, I know it's easy for me to say because there's lots of distractions. But you've got to be a person that finds that place of prayer. And you can listen to that still small voice of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, you know. And I'm listening to him even when I'm talking to you today, doing this message. I'm trying to make sure I'm hearing the Holy Spirit to have the direction that you need to have in your life today, you know. He knows what's on your heart. He knows what's on your mind. He knows the direction that you need to have for your life. Jeremiah doesn't, but the Holy Spirit, he does. He knows right what you've been doing all week. He knows what you're doing right now. He knows what you're, you're burdened down with, what's on your heart today. And so it's important to listen to the Holy Spirit so you can be a blessing to someone else, you know. You know, our life isn't all about ourselves. It's about being able to be available to the Holy Spirit to help others and be a blessing to them. And it, and it benefits you in so many ways, not trying to get something back from those people, because God's our reward. He's the one that makes that law work where it comes back to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. But God wants, he wants to use you to minister to people around you to meet your needs and to meet their needs. And so it's important that you're listening to that Holy Spirit on the inside of you, praise the Lord. Listen to what it says here, though, that they, they may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. My goodness, that's powerful to think about. I'm wanting to go on, but you know, his love is huge. His love is massive. <laughs> the breadth and length and depth and height of his love and his care for you. Oh my goodness, it's overwhelming to think about how much he cares for you. He loves you and he wants to help you right there where you're at. You're not alone. You're not by yourself. No, he's, his breadth and length and depth and height are so big and full of compassion and love for you. He wants you in this family. He wants you to have victories. He wants you to live a good life and have an adventure in faith. But, you know, you're limited by what you're willing to step out to do. You know, I was thinking of that Indiana Jones, you know, movie, you know, where I believe it's the last crusade. I could be wrong, you know, and you think about how he... He couldn't see this invisible bridge to go across, you know, and he, he has to step out in faith, you know, and he steps out. He could have fell in, but he stepped out, you know, and come to find out there was an invisible, invisible bridge there, you know, but he had to step out, you know, never would have crossed, never would have got to the other side, never would have found something that he was looking for. And you've got to be willing to step out, you know, step out on faith, what God's called you to do, you know, whatever area it is, whatever he's needing you to do, you know, you've got to step out. And we're going to look at some more of that today. If I can get on <laughs> with what I'm talking about, you've got to be willing to step out. You know, we're in no hurry. This is my podcast. We can be here all day if we want to. Am I right? <laughs> you know, let's just let the Holy Spirit have his way. We're in no rush. Let's just let him have his way. But he wants you to be able to step out and do what he's called you to do. And sometimes you're a little uncomfortable doing that, you know. I was thinking about even sitting here, you know, how I was at uh, Rama Bible School and I had to do a couple of messages at Rama Bible School. And there was a good amount of people there, you know. And these are ministers, great ministers. I actually have those recordings. I probably won't release them <laughs> because they weren't my favorite ones. Maybe one day I will. Because I'm not my boss, you know, but but they, these messages, I got up there, especially the first one, I was so nervous, you know, but I had a dream, you know, 
And if you have a dream, you got to be willing to step out. You know, if you have something you want to accomplish in life, you got to be willing to step out, you know. And I'm stepping out. I get up there. And I mean, the guys before me, they were great ministers. I mean, just, oh, my goodness. Some wonderful, wonderful ministers. And I got to get up there, you know. <laughs> you know, because at Rama, they have, at the time, Brother Hagen was a teacher, you know, one of the main teachers. So there was quite a draw of people at that time. There's still quite a draw now. But there was quite a draw then of so many people at Rama. And uh, when I got up there, you know, you had some seasoned speakers that had done a bunch of speaking. You could tell, you know, and then you had some people that weren't quite as good. And I was one of those <laughs> that hadn't spoke as much. And I had to get up there and speak. I, I got up there to speak and it was uh, short and to the point, you know, and it sounded like I was really nervous, but I stepped out. But, you know, you don't get better unless you start doing something. Did you hear me, somebody out there? You don't get better unless you step out and you do it, and it may take some time, and you've got to be willing to be patient on you to work some of those things out, you know? You know, when I did music, uh, when I first started doing music, I actually did some secular music and things like that and played in bands, and I always liked to record them, then I would listen to them over and over, you know? And I would try to find what I needed to work on in those recordings. I'd listen to it, and I'd be like, oh, okay, I need to work on that. I'd find, well, hey, I didn't hit this very well, and... Uh, this instrument may not sound as good and, and I might want to work on this. You know, I'm doing this a lot. And if I took that out, it would sound better, you know. And, you know, but the more you do it and you record it and you listen to it, you start doing better, you know. It's easy just to put something out there, you know, and throw something out there that's not good. But if you really want it to be good, you, you do it over and over and you start listening to it and you check in what you do and so it can get better, you know, grade yourself, have others listen to yourself. And, you know, as far as music, you want, if they don't like it, well, you need to, what's going on? Why don't they like it? You know, that's why we don't have, I think, not as much good music if we're not careful out, you know, that today, like we could have, it's because you have to have other people's insight and, and listen to it, you know, that's why they have focus groups so they can listen to it and see how you're doing, you know, but you're growing Every time you do it, <laughs> you know, the more you do it, you get better at it, you know, and you have to be patient on yourself, you know, and, and patient on your, your development as you go forward, you know, and as I played with different bands and then I played after I rededicated my life to the Lord, I actually went into a Christian band. I was listening to myself today, matter of fact, in the Christian band I was playing and, uh, you know, and I, I was listening to how good the music was, but, you know, a lot of it came from years and years a practicing and doing it over and over and over. I listen to Jesse DePlanis or I listen to Kenneth Copeland. They'll talk about, or Jerry Seville even, and uh, they'll, they'll, they'll talk about how they were preaching at themselves in the mirror over and over and over, you know? And, it, and it's important because you want to put out quality things to other people, you know? You can be inspired by the Holy Spirit, but you also want to make sure that you're putting out something that's a blessing to other people. If it's music or if it's a book, you know, don't throw something out there that's just half-hearted. But do something, you know, that's quality for God so it can be a blessing to others. Now, let's look, we're getting to verse 20 here. It says, Now unto him who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you ask or think. Now, that something you should meditate on for this week and the rest of this year, that he wants to do something above all that you ask or think. Think about that today. Because he thinks big. And he wants to do some things that will astound you and blow your mind. But you have to be willing to let him do that in your life. You know, he, he doesn't ever make us do anything. Have you noticed that about your walk with God? You know, he doesn't force us to do anything. You know, you, you, even when you got saved, you know, the Holy Spirit drew you in, but you had to confess Jesus as Lord and believe God's risen Jesus from the dead. And then he, he can do a mighty work in you, make you a new creation in Christ Jesus. Boy, that's one of the greatest miracles he can do in your life. But he wants to do more. He wants to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that you ask or think in your life. You know, and that can mean a lot of different things to different people. But it's important that you let him do that in your life this year. You say, well, why is that important? Well, because it affects others, <laughs> right? You know, if he, if he does exceedingly abundantly above all you ask or think in your life, he knows it's going to affect some others. It's also going to develop your faith so that you can believe him for other big things in your life, you know, that he's trying to do. 
in different areas, you know, it's developing your faith. So you want him to believe him to do that for you this year. The Ephesians 3.20, the Amplified says it like this. Now to him who is by in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly. Now that word's interesting. If you look up in the, uh, in the Greek, super abundantly, you know, it's, 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 if you look at that word, you actually find that word when you, in the, uh, John 10, 10, it says, when he came to give you life and he came to give it to you abundantly. Well, if you look it up in the Greek, it says super abundantly, powerful to think about, you know, this is not just one place it is super abundantly in the Greek. Look it up in the Strong's. It says far above all that we dare. <laughs> Now, there's some things you're just not willing to ask God. Are you willing to dare to ask him? Because I tell you, he likes it when you ask him something that he's able to do. You know, he's able to do some wonderful things in your life. But do you dare ask him to do some wonderful things? We're so limited in our thinking as Christians. It's amazing to me, you know, when we have a God who can do anything. But we're, we're so, we limit him so much because we're not daring to ask for the big things and wonderful things he's trying to do in our lives, you know? What are you, dare, what are you willing to dare to ask him? <laughs> what is it that you're willing to dare to ask him, you know? And, and see him do such big things in your life, you know? Think about that, you know, today. Would it blow you away if he actually did it? Whatever it is you're thinking was too big for you to be able to do, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it blow you away if he just did it for you? Well, you say, well, Jeremiah, he wouldn't do that, wouldn't he? <laughs> He's done it for others. Why wouldn't he do it for you? He's not a, a God, like I've said before, you know, he's not a God that will do it for someone else and not you. No, he treats all of his kids the same and he wants to do it for you, praise the Lord. Amen. He's super abundant, far, far above all that we dare to ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. Let me read that again. He says, they ask or think infin and, and infinitely, I get that, I'll say that right here in a minute, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, and dreams. Now you say, well, Jeremiah, you just sound like one of those motivational speakers, you know? No, I'm reading you Bible, <laughs> right? He wants to do infinitely above, beyond your highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. And that sounds just like what he would want to do. He says all things are possible for those who believe. Why would he hold you back to something small? He wants to do something big in your life, praise the Lord, you know? And it's not just for you and for just your, your world. No, it's to help others and encourage. You know, it's amazing. When you think about some people, they're willing to do far above others. And, and Christians, we should be thinking the biggest in the world. <laughs> we have the biggest, we have the God of the universe on our side, and we should think big things to touch people's lives. You know, I'm thinking of Catherine Kuhlman and how many thousands of people came to see her speak. You know, and, it, and there's only one person you think about, you know, that may, with the Lord's help that, that was able to do that and have great and wonderful healings in her ministry. You know, you look at Benny Hinn and you look at these people, thousands of people coming in and God was able to use them, be a blessing to other people. You know, I can name many, many others, you know. But why couldn't he do that with you? And what if we were all like that? You know, God was able to use all of us to that capacity. Man, there wouldn't be half as many people not going to heaven, you know, not as many, not as many people that didn't make the rapture if we were all living up to our fullest potential. You know, God wants us to minister to as many people as we possibly can, you know. And who limits that? You think God's going, no, <laughs> uh, Jimmy? I'm not going to use you, you know. No, you really think he's that way? No, he wants to get as many people saved as he possibly can. He wants to minister to as many people as he possibly can through you, but you can't limit him. You know, you got to be willing to let him do that in your life, you know. And he wants to do far above what you ask or think. He wants you to see how big he can be in your life. And you have to be willing to let him do that in your life. I've had this happen many times in my life where he's done things that just have blown me out away and astonished me 
because he's willing to do that for everybody. He wants to do it for you. Don't look behind your, your shoulder and look over your other shoulder and say, no, he's not talking to me. No, he's, I'm talking to you. He wants to use you far above all that you can ask or think in your circumstance. That may not be ministry. That may not, maybe he wants you to help a ministry. Maybe he wants you to help more people than anybody you know you can see around you. You know, he wants to use you at whatever capacity he can use you and max that capacity out to be a blessing to someone else. And I believe he's going to do some things before the year is over in you, praise the Lord. You're going to look back and go, how did that happen? Because he's moving quickly and he wants to do some things quickly, I believe, in the earth, praise the Lord. Ephesians at 3.20, it says like this, and the message says, God can do anything. Say that with me. God can do anything. Say it with me again. God can do anything. Amen. He says, you know, far, far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. <laughs> I love that. That's the message version. He says he does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us, his spirit deeply and gently within us. Wow. Powerful to think about, you know. I was watching this thing on a movie recently with my family about this lady who who she I'm trying to think how old she was. She was very young and she went all around the world in a boat. <laughs> you know, how many people do that, you know? And to me that's that's crazy. And her boat went under the water, I believe they said seven times coming around the going around the world, you know. Went under seven times, still came back up and came all the way around the world seven times. It was like a pink boat, a young lady going around the world, you know. But she accomplished it. She went all the way around the world. Think about that today, you know. What could you accomplish? We, we, we limit ourselves so small, so little. You know, you say, well, I'm too old for this. No, nobody's too old, you know. You think about, you know, the book of Revelation and how old he was when he wrote that. John, you know, I, I believe he was 91 is actually what they're saying, that he was about 91 when he wrote the book of Revelation. <laughs> wow. Powerful things happen even with the elder people, you know. And, you know, Abraham had his child at a very, very old age, you know, and affected the world. Worlds changed because of these things that these men did, even at their old age. Young people, oh my goodness, think about David, you know, slaying the giant and the impact that had because of his young age he did something what could you do? You're never too young. You're never too old for God to do something exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think. You don't think David looked at that giant laying there going, wow, you know, <laughs> and all the victories he had as a king and not a king, you know, David's mighty men, you know, and he's seen how good God is and how he could do some wonderful things, you know, wonderful exploits with him. Think about that with your life today. He wants to do that with you. He wants to make wonderful things happen through you. And he's just, you, you, maybe you're, today you're a little bit older, but that's okay. God wants to use you. Maybe you're so young, you're just barely getting started, just got your diapers on there, you know, ready to go. Hey, you've got a whole lifespan, you know, to, to do what God's called you to do. Now, I do believe that the rapture's coming soon. I do believe that, but you've got time to do some wonderful, wonderful things for God. Amen. And we're supposed to be watching for it. You know, you got some ministers that say, well, he, they're just, they've got an escape mentality. No, there are signs and we do see things. So we should be thinking about other people, having our minds on other people, praise the Lord. So we didn't finish this in the message, did we? Far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us. His spirit deeply and gently working within us. Don't you like that about God? He's deep and he's gentle. <laughs> oh my goodness. He is deep. Amen. You get revelation from him all the time. You can read scripture over and over and get something new all the time because he's deep. <laughs> you think you've exhausted all the light from one scripture, but he'll turn around and use it again another way. You know, I remember uh, Jesse Plinz talking about it when he went to heaven and he saw the angels going around the throne and, and, and he said that every time they go around, they go, holy. It was because it, it, it's the aside to him. They were like, holy, holy. Well, you know, his words like that, you know, you, you see more and more and you can't exhaust the light on his word. It's not just a book. 
it's a it's a it's the word of God, and it has many facets of light throughout that book, you know, and it speaks to you many different ways, and it'll speak to you today, right there where you're at today. If you let the Holy Spirit speak to you today, praise the Lord. Well, super abundant. I looked up that word, you know, of course, and a couple of different things, and it says exceedingly or excessively abundant, more than sufficient, excessive. <laughs> It's because he's excessive. He wants to be excessive in your life, excessive to the degree that he can be a blessing to others and you overflowing so you can be a blessing to others. You know, stuff isn't all that important, but it is nice when you can be a blessing to someone else or, or you can be a blessing to someone else, you know. And in your life, you're supposed to be excessive in every way so that you can be a blessing to someone else, you know. You know, it has to do with you following the instructions that he's given into you. The Holy Spirit will lead you the right way. I remember Brother Hagen talking about one time, you know, about investments. You know, he's talking, he knew this gentleman who would go in his closet and he'd just wait until he had, he wouldn't invest in something until he had a green light, you know. You can find this in the, was the, the lead, uh, being led by the Holy Spirit, his book, about Brother Hagen, you know, and he'd go in the closet and, and uh, he would listen to some until he had a green light that he wouldn't do it until he had a green light in his spirit about doing it. When you say green light, well, until he had peace about it in his spirit and he wouldn't invest in it until he knew that it was okay to invest in it, you know. And when he did, and then he, he would do really well, as I remember from the story. Think about that today. You know, he, he leads us in good paths. He's got good plans for us. Prearranged, picked for you, good pass for you if you'll listen to the Holy Spirit. And he's excessive, you know. Stuff is not what it's always about. Maybe today you're needing a wife or a husband, you know, and, and you're looking for the right one. Well, it's all along that path. Everything that you're needing is all along that path, you know. The needs to be supplied to those kids is all along that path, you know. It's amazing to me, you know, we, for our kids, they were so provided for just as soon as they were born is amazing, you know, but it's all along that path that you're being led by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. He's excessive. Another version says that another uh, dictionary says it like this, excessive in quantity, more than sufficient, overabundant. I really like that word, overabundant. He's overabundant. <laughs> And think about that today, you know, and you, you need to go get a shampoo and you get two. That's kind of how he is. He's overabundant. He gets you more than what you need because he's overabundant and he's good to you all the time. You know, you think about, I remember this gentleman talking about how he, he would feed his cat. He was gone a lot, you know, and, but the cat would, he, he had a, or no, it was a dog. I'm sorry. He had a little dog and, and a dog would eat a little bit and come back, eat a little bit, you know, would come back. But he, he always had food. The bowl was always full. He always made sure the dog had his bowl, his bowl full, you know. And God will always have you full and overflowing. He'll always make you have more than what you need. You don't have to be stressed today. He, he keeps the bowl full. You know, I have a dog, Odie. <laughs> and we try to always keep his water and his food full, you know. And God will always keep you fool, and he'll make sure that you have more than one. He said he did, wouldn't leave his seed begging for bread. Hey, Amen. That's unusual for a Christian not to have what they need, you know, because God wants to make sure that you have it. Now, if you don't have it, it's because of what we were talking about before. You know, are you doing what he told you to do? Well, you know, he'll lead you and guide you to make sure that you have what you need to have. God wants us to be excessive in our lives. He wants us to have our desires met, our needs met. Amen. The Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Now, I know um, just as I'm speaking about this, I can I can hear it in my spirit. There's some people just cringing when I say some of these things. And it's because you've been taught wrong. You know, God wants you to have the best. He wants you to have a good life. He wants you to have what you need and he wants you to be blessed and he wants you to be encouraged today. He sent me here to encourage you. Not to give up, not to cave in and quit today. You know, he wants you to fulfill the purpose that he has for your life and let him be excessive. You know, there's sometimes my wife, you know, uh, she'll be wanting to get me a drink and a refill because she's so sweet. She's always good to me. I mean, she's just a wonderful, wonderful wife, you know. But, you know, I'm I'm wired where, hey, I could go get it. I got to get myself. I got to go get it. I got let me get my own drink. I'm just wired that way. I'm going to go get it myself, you know. 
but she's trying to be a blessing to me, you know, trying to be, <laughs> to do something nice for me. And she want to refill my drink or something like that. And some of us are just like that. They're, we're hard headed. We want to do it ourselves. We want to do it ourselves. When well, God's wanting to come and take care of things for you, if you let him do that, you know, it doesn't mean that you don't get your cup out and do your part, you know, but we, let him help you to get where you need to go. You know, it's not all about you just figuring out things. Let him show you the way, you know, it save you a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of stress. If you listen to the precious voice of the Holy Spirit, but if you want something unusual to happen to you, then you've got to be willing to do something unusual. God wants to do some unusual things in your life. And it comes back to you doing something maybe even unusual than what you normally do in your life, you know. We got to be people, people would to do that. I remember listening to Brother Michael, you know, Michael Studeman does The Truth with Studi. I'm plugging him there <laughs> for his podcast, The Truth with Studi. There, check it out. It's good, you know, kind of like an infomercial there. But uh, check it out. It's good, you know. It's on my website, too, there, if you want to check it out. Uh, on the uh, media page, you can hit his link there, I believe. And uh, of course, he's on uh, Podbean too, so you can check that out. But I remember him talking about his healing in his life, you know. And he he drove clear across the states here. He drove from Oklahoma all the way to Florida. If you don't know how far that is, that's a good distance. And he drove all the way down there for his healing because that's the way the Lord was leading him to get over to Rodney Howard Brown's church, and God would minister to him for healing. But you know, he had to be willing to do something unusual in his life, you know, and you've got to be willing to do what God's leading you to do in your life. You know, it may not be the same as what he has me do. And it may not be the same as you've heard some other people talk about how they got their healing, but it's important to listen to the Holy Spirit. He knows where you're at in your faith walk. He knows where you're at to get you what you need in your life. What is he talking to you about today? What is that step he's trying to get you to take today? So he can do exceedingly abundantly above what you ask or think in your life. You know, he wants to change some things, you know, make some things better. You know, you might get a healing, but he also might get you to a place of your wildest dreams of a vacation, you know, and bless you and encourage you today. You know, just he said, well, hey, I don't feel good, but I'm making plans to do something big for God, you know, and I'm, I'm going to go out and go get a big vacation, you know, and praise the Lord and do something, you know, stretching your faith out, you know, I mean, because it's going to take faith for you to feel good to go do that. It's going to take faith for you to step out and do that, but you should make preparations by faith, you know, make plans by faith so that you're growing all the time. Praise the Lord. Well, let's look at second Kings here. Second Kings, the fourth chapter, the first verse. Second Kings, the fourth chapter, the first verse, he says, One day with the wife of the man from Gilead of the prophets of Elisha, your servant, my husband, is dead. You will know that I, a good man he was, devoted to God, and now the man to whom he was not dead is on his way to collect by you know, taking my two children as slaves. This is a woman talking here, you know, who's lost her husband, and, and uh, she's uh, trying to handle a debt here, and she's got Elisha that's come to her, you know, she didn't try to help her. Elisha says to her, Elisha said, I wonder how I can be of help. <laughs> he said, how can I be of help, you know, to you? Well, she's probably like, hey, pull out some money, take care of this, you know. Well, that's not how God was leading him. You know, and listen to what it says here. Tell me, what do you have in your house? So the Lord is dealing with him about what has she got in her house? And, you know, sometimes some things that he's you've got around you, God can work with to help you in a circumstance and make things come to you that will blow your mind. Just working with what you have. You know, you always, you, you, we look so much, well, well, I'll do this when this comes in, or I'll do this when that comes in, or, you know, well, why don't you start with where you're at, you know? I can tell you so many stories that I've worked with where I'm at, you know, and God's done some wonderful things in my life, but you have to work with where you're at, you know? Maybe you can't do this, and maybe you can't do that, but you can do this, right? You know, we had to be careful about being so negative that we think, well, I can't do this, I can't do that, but you, you're forgetting that what you can do, <laughs> right? What can you do? 
There's something you can do. You just have to work with what you have. Well, I can't do it until I have this, and I can't do it until I have that. Well, you know, God's given you something to work with. Even this woman who's about to lose her children, who's in debt, he's given you, given her something, you know. It's just you have to listen to the Holy Spirit as, as to what it is, you know, and he'll give you wisdom to work from where you're at to get to things in your life that he's wanting to bless you with, you know. And you have to listen to the Holy Spirit in the circumstance. Elijah said, I wonder how I can help. Tell me what you do have in your house. What do you have that God could use to bring something abundant to your life? You know, you think about the woman who gave, they were giving those offerings in the Gospels there. And, and Jesus saw, they were looking at the offerings as they were coming in. This woman with the widows might give. And he said, this woman gave all that she had. Wasn't a lot, you know. But she gave all that she had, you know, and, and sometimes in a circumstance, it might be something that you have or maybe just something small, but that's all you have. That can be a whole lot. <laughs> Her reward, I can't imagine how big it was because she gave all that she had. And you don't think God knows. He, he goes, he measures things by percentages, you know, and that was all she had. I've done that before. I never forget one time we were up at, uh, we were going to Raymond Church at the time. And I remember me and my wife put everything we had into the offering, you know. And, it, and sometimes God may lead you to do something like that. I'm not telling you that's what to do. Don't live on my revelation, but that's what he had me do at that time. But, you know, giving what you have, everything you have in a circumstance is always going to come back to you in a big way. You know, maybe it's art or Maybe it's a poem or maybe it's a, you know, maybe it's your gifting of music or, you know, whatever it is he's leading you to give, you know, God can use that for great things, you know, but you have to be willing to give and be willing to step out and use what you have. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm thinking of people right now who have so many talents and they can do so many things, but you know, you have to be careful about being one of those person. I would do this, but I need to have that. And I do this, and I, I, but yeah, you, but the steps of faith to get there are so important, you know, to, to getting to where you want to go. You know, you're growing the whole time, but so working with what you have is important. Maybe it's not perfect when you start, but there's no telling where you're going to get to if you just start, you know. And so God can do some wonderful things, and you praise the Lord. So nothing she said, well, she said, uh, he said in her house, she said, nothing, she said. Well, I do have a little bit of oil. <laughs> you know, I remember me and my wife, you know, we were at uh, going to Rama, you know, and we were eating food. I remember at one point where I'm like, man, we need food, you know, and I knew there were a couple of people who graduated Rama next door. And uh, I <laughs> just a little bit of apple pie. And I was like, I'm going to go give them some apple pie. You know, we were needing food. Gave them some apple pie. And, you know, we had groceries come. And God took care of us in so many different ways. It's amazing, you know. And, it, you know, and I just gave a little apple pie. You know, sometimes just giving some food or, you know, we always want to just hold on to everything, you know. But and God's trying to get something better into your life, you know. And, and you may not even have to pay for another meal, you know, if you just give out in some way so God can get something better in your life. Giving out some way so he can get something better into your life, praise the Lord. So let's go on down here to the th third verse here. It says, here's what you do, said Elisha. Go up and down the street and borrow jugs and bowls from all your neighbors. So she had this, but then he's saying, hey, go get some jugs and some bowls. <laughs> And borrow them. You know, she could be embarrassed to go get these jugs and bowls and never get a blessing in her life. She could be embarrassed about going, you know, to house to house and asking for help. You know, it's amazing to me, you know, when you're, you're, you're in a situation where you need some help. You, you know, you don't need to be embarrassed. Step out. Do what's needed in the situation. You know, but whatever he's leading you to do, do it, you know, because God can make the circumstance so much better. For you, praise the Lord. So she, she's going up and down the street. Can you imagine this? Think about this. Now she's knocking on the door and I need a jug. What do you need a jug for? I'm thinking Elisha's going to help me with this jug. What, what's he going to do with the jug? Well, I, I really can't tell you at this point, but he, he says I'm going to need some jugs. Can you imagine being the person giving him a jug? You, 
what are you going to do with the jug? What are you going to do with my bowls? You know, and she's still wanting to get as many as she can get, you know. So she's going around knocking, can I borrow your jug and borrow your bowls? You know, but she's working with what she has, you know. I, I remember, you know, we were doing this uh, coffee house type thing in front of my dad's sub shop. And, you know, I didn't have a lot of money, you know. So somebody was helping me make curtains to run across the front so it didn't look like a coffee house you know, or a sub shop when I was doing it at night, you know. And so they, they, they even put these curtains together, you know. And, you know, I didn't have a whole lot of cash. I did have musical equipment and some music stuff because that's where I put all my money because I'd played in bands for years, you know. So... So I took the musical equipment and took the music stuff, you know, and had to stand there, you know. That's about what I had to throw into the mix. And then had cheesecakes coming in for my brother, you know. And so he's working with what you have for your circumstance, right? And working with what you have to make it a good experience for other people. And and you doing that adventure in faith that God has for you, you know, it's, it's amazing how you make it really great. You know, people want to contribute to something when somebody has some vision. People want to jump in on something when you're going a direction. They want to be a part of it. You know, they're like, oh, man, yeah, let me be a part of it because you got a direction and you're going a certain way. And the Lord draws the people in and helps you to fulfill that purpose that you have for your life, you know. But, you know, you, it doesn't go anywhere, and, it, and, you, and he can't do the above and above all that you ask or think in your life unless you're willing to step out, you know. Maybe today you're believing for a certain kind of automobile, you know, and what are you doing to step out to make that happen, you know? Or what are you trying to you got Well, I got a broken down one right now. Well, what are you doing with the broken down one, <laughs> you know? Maybe it runs, and maybe it's decent. Maybe you could give it to someone else, you know. You say, well, I'm driving it right now, you know. Well, you can let them borrow it, you know. Doing what you can do with what you do have right now, you know, so God can make something better come into your life. Praise the Lord. But whatever he's leading you to do, do it. Remember what the, they were talking about, you know, Mary was talking to Jesus. They were doing the miracles, you know. She said, whatever he tells you to do, <laughs> she had some experience with Jesus, hadn't she? She said, whatever he tells you to do, just do it, Right. And, you know, and, and she, she's dealing with his circumstance, you know, of getting the, the wine for this party. And what an interesting thing to say about this was not something that had to be done. This was not something that everybody had to have, you know. This was just something that they wanted, you know. And God does care about your wants. He does care about your party, right? He cares about the stuff you enjoy, and he, and he wants to be a part of it, you know? Now, I didn't say he cares about it. He wants you to just go out and, you know, because you, you know there's going to be somebody that takes it to the extreme, you know? But he, he, he cares about your part of your world. And he wants it to be better for you, you know? But she said to him, she said, whatever he just asked you to do, talking to the servants, you know, that had to help him to, for this miracle to happen and, and he, she says, whatever he tells you to do, just do it, you know. And he said, go fill these pots up with water. And, and these servants are like, oh, my goodness. They're going to try to do something kind of crazy here, you know. They want us to fill this up with water. And what well, are they going to try to pull here, you know. We're going to throw Kool-Aid in there, <laughs> you know. And, and, and that's how you would be. You'd be questioning what Jesus has you to do. You know, he said, go fill these up with water. And, and some people, you know, and you're doing something for the Lord. You know, you, you might question how he does things, but he knows what he's doing. And you just do what he says to do. No more, no less. Just do what he tells you to do. You know, I remember, you know, I, was, uh, I had a, a CD, a, a music CD I, was, uh, I felt led to go give to somebody. I'll never forget, you know, and I went and took this music CD to somebody. And I'm like, okay, they're not going to care about this music CD. But I felt like the Lord was dealing with me. To, and I drove a good distance to take this CD to this person. And uh, I'll never forget, I, I handed it to them. And they said they'd been praying for the Lord to show himself real into their lives. You know, and I brought them a Christian music CD. And it, and it, it did give to him, you know, that was on his heart. And then he, he started crying when I handed it to him because he was looking, he was praying for someone to do something in his life, you know, and to see that God is real. You know, you don't understand the impact you make. That was something little, you know, but it made a great impact on something else, you know. 
And all the things you're doing with your life, they're having profound impacts on people around you. You don't even realize just a small thank you here and showing some love here and doing a little extra here, you know, can make some wonderful things happen in your life if you're willing to let God do that, you know. I like what one person I said, said recently, I was listening to a message recently, and he said, if you make something happen for someone else, God will make something happen for you. You know, and maybe you have a dream today and you you know somebody that's working on that same type of dream may not be doing the same thing you're doing, but you want to make something happen for someone else so God can make something happen for you. And it, and it doesn't mean money and it might be just giving time and promoting it or whatever he's leading you to do, you know, and well, maybe it's um, letting others know about it, <laughs> whatever it is. You know, whatever he's dealing with you about, do it, you know. Not that I'm trying to push you to do something particular, but do what he's saying, the Holy Spirit in your heart. What, he, what can you do to help someone else, you know? What can you do to make their life a little better, you know? And I remember listening to that minister particularly, you know, he's talking about how he, he did so many things for other people. One particular person, he was talking about how he, he helped this uh, minister who was having trouble finding an opportunity to speak somewhere. He, he was a well-known minister and he opened all kinds of doors for him. Then he never had a challenge again trying to find a place to speak. Think about that, you know, just by helping him and his family with their needs, God opened all kinds of opportunities up for him. And, you know, he wants to do things like that on so many different levels for people if you'll make something happen for someone else and encouraging other people, you know, and helping them. You know, it's amazing when you come in their life and you're being led by the Holy Spirit, how it encourages them to fulfill the goals and the dreams that they have for their lives, you know. And you look at Jesus' life, his whole life was about others. His whole life was about, he would go down to one, even one person, you know, and and help them, you know, because his life was so about others. And he gave his whole life because it was all about others. And he wanted to do something for everybody, you know. And our lives, we're supposed to be giving our lives for others and being a blessing to other people. And you're going to be so blessed back by that, you know. You, you won't, God can meet your needs and help you with your circumstances and help you with your destiny. But it all starts with you helping others meet their needs. What he said, and like I said before, he said, if you make something happen for someone else, God will make something happen for you. And that's just kind of stuck with me. I thought that was good, you know, and that's what we need to be thinking about this week. You know, we may do another message on this here, you know, getting into the year of God wanting to do more than you ask or think. But, you know, keep that in mind for him to do that in your life. You have to get more aware of others and you need to be listening to the Holy Spirit is saying, how can I help others? In a circumstance and what can I do he he was talking about how he, he he devoted he started devoting all of his time to just whatever need he could help others with and whatever he could help someone else other than a situation you know and you know that's what Jesus taught us he said love the Lord God with all your heart and love the others you know love others and that's what we're supposed to be doing you know not just to be so focused on ourselves we're supposed to be focused on God number one and his leading and focused on others, how we can be a blessing to them. Then I went over my time here a little bit, but then I'm, I don't take any apology for that. But God wants to help others through you. He wants you to be encouraging others so he can do something exceedingly, abundantly above all you ask or think in your life. But it has to do with you getting your focus off of yourself and getting focused on the needs around you, how you can be a blessing to someone else. And I know that some needs can be overwhelming. I'm talking about what you can do in your world and help somebody particularly, the person the Lord's put on your heart particularly to help that person today. What can you do? What can you make happen? You know, I'll never forget, you know, I'm gonna close on this story. I thought it was really amazing to me. I was a youth pastor in, in uh, this guy I didn't even know that well. My wife had a good friend. I'll never forget. I'm not going to name her name, but she had a really good friend. She's still friends with her today. But now I was youth pastoring, and uh, I had never had a lot of people do a lot for me. I always like to help a lot of people, but hadn't had a lot of people do a lot of things. Just, man, determined to do something for me. And uh, I, I'll never forget, you know, at, at that point. I've had lots of people do things since then, you know, but at that point, you know, I was pretty new. I was a youth pastor. I was very young, you know. 
And uh, I never forget, you know, well, I'm in this house, we had this corner house, you know, and it had a big yard. I mean, a corner house. And I mean, this is a big house and it had uh, three or four trees going down one side. And it, it was just a big yard around this house. It's an old house built probably in the 50s, you know. And uh, it was an interesting experience. We'd moved into the youth pastor. We found this house, you know, and we were there and we had kids coming to our door. <laughs> We even were in our bedroom, looked over, and they're spying through our window, you know, <laughs> because we were youth pastors, you know. And uh, we were the youth people in the town. We came from Rama, you know, and there were new people in town. But our youth group had grown. It got, man, I mean, it just was growing all the time. And matter of fact, it, we started with just a few. Uh, we had a few folding chairs, and we had a pastor's office is all we had. We didn't really have a youth room. The, the room that they were using, they were using for the kids, uh, younger kids, like toddlers and things, you know, over in this other room. So they had to take the the uh, the pastor's office. And so they gave us, we had four youth and they were all from the same family and, and they were in that front office, you know, and it's interesting, you know, so we, we started out there and then it just kept growing and it grew past the the front and we were putting out more folding chairs and then we we're up past his, his desk and it just kept growing. One At the point uh, before we really not too far before we left, there it was we were had about half the church was just youth. You know, it was getting full of youth people. We just I was taking bus load after bus load to bring young people into the church. It was amazing, you know, how God was ministering. And uh, I, when I stopped <coughs> driving the bus, I'll never forget. I, I remember going down the road. I saw one of my youth kids coming, and he had his Bible in his hand, making sure he made it to the to the church service because he wanted to be there and had his Bible. You know. You know, they want the word. People are hungry for the word. They want the word. Young people want the word. They want to see God move, you know. Well, you know, I, we were, you pastor at this, or I, we were living in this home, and they came over. I'll never forget her friend, and this, and she was married to this, newly married to this, uh, her husband, which is still with her to this day. And uh, he said, I, I want to mow your yard. And I was amazed. And the impact, it still has an impact on me today when I think about it. He got out there in the heat and mowed that whole yard for us, you know, think about that, you know, just mowing the yard, the impact how it had on my life, showing God's love, just out there mowing. I mean, it took time and it took effort to mow that yard, you know. <laughs> I mean, you think about it, it was a big yard and this is in the country too, you know, or it was in a small town too, you know. And I mean, it was big, it was on the corner, you know. I've had corner houses before and I mean, those are big yards, you know, and but he took the time to do that. You know, what could you do? You know, meeting someone else's need and how's that going to impact you and further what you're wanting to get done, you know, in your life. God, just, you have to be open to whatever the Holy Spirit's put on your heart, you know, and not just toss it to the side and one phone call to somebody or whatever it is he's put on your heart. How, how much of an impact is that going to make on what God's trying to do for you? He's trying to get the more what you ask or think in your life, but you'd want to limit him to something small, you know. I'm I'm wanting to close here, but the Lord keeps giving me more, so I'm going to keep going here for just a little bit, but I'll never forget pulling up to this uh, coffee house, you know, and that uh, I played music and I was playing a Christian band for some time, for those that haven't heard me a whole lot, and uh, I pulled up to this coffee house, you know, and it was after we'd been doing that sub shop thing, and and this gentleman wanted us to come there, and he wanted us to do our music there at this this coffee house. And we, I pulled up, and the Lord said, "Well, hey, if you bless him, I, I remember my little blue car. <laughs> he said, I'll bless you, right? You meet his need, and I'll be a blessing to you. You know. Now his coffee house was going under at the time. You know, I mean, it literally was. There was nobody coming in. And you think about how many drinks he has to sell to make this thing work. It's a pretty big size coffee house, you know. I mean, he was able to have a band in the front of it. It was a big coffee house, you know. And uh, you know, and I, I started going there, and, I, I, and that's not the point I'm trying to get to. But he, the Lord spoke to me to bless him, and I'll bless you. Well, you know, we were going and weren't getting a lot of results until one time the Lord gave me an unusual idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, I'll tell you about that idea that he gave me. He told me at the time I, I printed these flyers, you know, and the reason why I'm telling you this is because he might give you an unusual idea and you need to listen to what he's telling you to do. Well, we were trying to minister to youth in the area at the time, you know, through our Christian band and be a blessing to these people at this coffee house that was empty, <laughs> but there was nobody in there, you know. 
And he's a Christian. He's going to church. He was actually going to a church of God, a friend of mine, church of God. Now, I'm not church of God, but my friend was going there, and they were playing the worship there, and he, he was in my band, and he met this gentleman through that, and he, he wanted us to come play there. Well, you know, he devoted his, his coffee house to God. And, you know, and God's trying to meet his need with my help, you know. And, uh, and so the Lord had dealt with me about printing these flyers. Well, he had this little printer at his house. And back then, printers were kind of slow. They just slowly print something and slowly print something. <laughs> it took forever to get these flyers printed. And he printed the, a whole stack of flyers, you know. Well, the Lord dealt with me about those flyers, and I said, okay, well, what we'll do and was we'll mail them to all the churches in the area is what the Lord had led me to do. Well, you know, and then I, he led me to take them to my prayer group. So I took these flyers, went into the prayer group that I was in at the time. We laid hands on those, those flyers and prayed for people to come into his coffee house. And think about the prayer of agreement and how powerful that was. And then next thing you know, after sending those out to all the churches in the area, that place was packed. I mean, just pack. he wasn't having problems selling drinks, man. Now he's doing sandwiches. <laughs> he's got the radio coming because the music, there's so much music. Other bands were coming. They're, they're you know, not just us playing anymore. Now he's got different bands playing, good Christian bands playing. He had one point, he had them inside the coffee house and in the parking lot playing. But it just it blew up because of one small thing the Holy Spirit tweaked us on and had us do. And you know, God's dealing with you all the time about this type of thing. He wouldn't just want to do something like that for him and for me. He wants to do it for you, you know. And I was a blessing to him and God blessed my life through that experience. And I can't tell you how many different ways. But you know, it was all about meeting a need and being the blessing to someone else, you know. You can be doing your thing, you know, whatever God's called you to do. But when you're helping someone else, he can make your thing so much better if you're willing to reach out and do what God's called you to do in that process. And you've got to be listening to the Holy Spirit and let him lead you as of what to do. Let's pray. Father, help people today, Father. If they want to rededicate their lives to you today, help them to do that today. And help them to be encouraged today to, as they do that today. Say, hey, I rededicate my life to you right now, Jesus. And I, and I don't plan to go any other way, but with the way that you want me to go with my life right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you rededicated your life, let me know in the comments or email me at jeremiasministries at yahoo.com. I'd love to hear about that. And also, if you want to be saved, I'm going to pray for you right now. Romans, the 10th chapter, the 9th and 10th verses. If you confess the Lord Jesus and believe God's risen Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. If you want to be saved and born again right now, you don't want anything else. You want the best for your life. Then you need to pray this with me today. You, you're making the best decision you ever made in your life today. Praise the Lord. It's a great time to dedicate your life to the Lord and get your family on the right direction. So go ahead and pray this with me today. And just repeat after me. Father, I just thank you because Jesus is risen from the dead. I believe you've risen Jesus from the dead. And I confess Jesus is Lord of my life right now. Jesus be Lord of my life right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. If you pray that prayer, I believe he's done a new work in you, and I believe he's done some wonderful things to make you a new creation in Christ Jesus. You're not the same as you were before, and he's done some things to make you not the same as you ever were before. Praise the Lord. He's a good, good God. Praise the Lord. Now email me at jeremiasministries at yahoo.com. Love to hear about it. Put it in the comments if you're on Podbean there. We'd love to hear about it. We love you. Praise the Lord. You're such a wonderful blessing to me and Sheila's lives. And we love seeing all the wonderful comments that we get on all the time. God's been giving us some wonderful comments through his people. And so we're just enjoying it. Praise the Lord. And, and we're very thankful for you. If you'd like to contact us for a prayer, praise reports, or offerings, go to jeremiasmithministries.com. Thank you for listening.